one of the kind of common themes that run through the work are um, these spheres that I paint, which I believe to be angels. I believe that when we die, we don't grow wings and float around on clouds, but we don't disappear either. I believe that we form energy fields, and um, those energy fields are not shards, and they're not necessarily visible, but I believe they are spherical in shape, just like our planet or the sun or anything else, stars out there are all spheres. And so I've been doing a lot of these paintings of spheres, falling specifically, which represent falling angels, including a real fallen angel, so to speak, behind us at the bronze. Um, I think the fallen angel represents a lot. It represents the country I come from. It represents the planet we're living in, where, where we thought we were more important than God and have thus been booted out of heaven. I work on several paintings at the same time quite often and um, they each take their own form unplanned. It's an interesting journey all the time and if it doesn't work I obliterate it and, and, and c continue to work using quite often the underpainting that will um, throw things out or survive and become forms of their own. What I like about this one is that it, it's got quite a few, there's quite a few paintings where I have I have this kind of lonely rhinoceros uh, wandering across a, um, an, an otherworldly desert or an other, otherworldly landscape. And, and that comes from the kind of, um, obviously the plight of the rhino in my country is huge. They're under they're, they're, they're with threat of extinction with the terrible perching that's going on. And then, of course, the actual planet itself is under the threat of extinction. So the theme of, of a rhino looking for a new home or arriving on another planet is quite a, pro a prominent one at the moment. And so this rhino is now exploring some otherworldly place that might be another planet that's more beautiful than the one that we're busy messing up. I'm on the matric or A-level equivalent syllabus in South Africa, and I've often had kids phoning me saying, where's a book? And there's, no, there's never been a book. There's been a lot of media stuff. I've had a website, but never a book. And instead of doing a kind of half-hearted thing that might end up in my garage, I've decided to wait and do it properly. And I've got an enormous archive of work going back 36 years. And choosing what we put in and what we use, it really is outstanding uh, what has been put together and is going to be superbly distributed all over the place. I'm, I'm very excited about this book. Well, what was interesting with the musicians I've worked with is all of them have wanted to be painters. They all started off wanting to be painters. And I started off wanting to be a rock star. So it's been a very happy, happy marriage in that sense. And I, and I think with, uh, with Bowie and with Ina, there's been this amazing chemistry. We really just have gelled very well and we kind of groove along very well. And the work that we did together and the, the paintings that we've done together could be akin to our musicians jamming. The language that we spoke happened to be in paint rather than sound form. Um, with, with Eno, we took it to another level and actually made sounds that accompanied the painting. So we did sound paintings that we showed at the last Venice Biennale, where you put headphones on and you listen to the sound of the painting. And of course, that's very much Brian's world. Uh, with, 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 with Bowie, it was, ver it was an extraordinary experience working with him. He had a fabulous sense of humor, great energy, and obviously a great mind. Um, but energy, quite extraordinary. Uh, I describe it as kind of demonic energy. He was working on his outside, in a two-week period while we were in New York, he's working on his outside album, which is one of the finest he's made, acting as Warhol in the Schnabel film on Basquiat, and doing over 50 paintings with me.